Well hello, today we're looking at the Smart Gesture Box from FXT. But before we get into it, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, leave a comment down below, please subscribe and click on that little bell icon to find out when I'm uploading footage. But anyway, back to this. What is it? Well, I have to say I was a bit confused with it at first because it is, as you'd expect, where it says Smart Gesture Box, you can do things by making gestures to the camera. But let's have a look what's inside first. There are instructions and there are things. You've got this little micro VTX, the camera. This is the uh, Venus Pro V2. So it's a little CMOS sensor with a 2.1 mm lens. Pretty good CMOS sensors in these FXTs. Uh, and then you've got the OSD thing to, to set things up on the camera. We take this out. This is a little linear antenna. And if we get the VTX out here, you see it's got an MMCX adapter so we can plug that straight in. It's also already wired up here with power. This is a 5 volt only powered VTX. Um, and then it's got a connection direct to the camera here. And this is labeled as control. And how this works is in the camera you get, if we compare it to the regular Venus Pro, you will see, and I'll show you a close up of this, instead of the power, so you can put a, an external power source in and it'll read that as part of the OSD, you've got this thing called control. So, and then the second section of the box, you've got a bunch of cables, some mounting hardware, and a second MMCX adapter with an SMA. What we get in here, to explain, this big cable basically connects everything up. So we take this one and this connects to the camera. We then get this little trailing thing for the OSD, so we can plug that in and this, and then on these little bits left, they plug into the VTX like so, and finally there's this little control cable that plugs in like so. So the idea here is you've got a single five volt power connector, which powers the VTX. The VTX passes power through to the camera and a control signal and then there is an OSD for doing stuff. Now, it took me a little while to actually work out what's going on here, because this uh, VTX on its own, this is called a, an FX868T, which is a little micro VTX, which supports smart audio. Instead of connecting it this way, if you ignore the camera, you could connect this control cable to a UART on your flight controller on a quad, and have this connected up with smart audio as part of the beta flight OSD. But that kind of isn't what this is designed for. So what this camera does, I think, is actually talk smart audio to the VTX and interpret the results. But the interesting thing in here is you could use either the little OSD thing to do stuff, or you can use your palm of your hand to cover the lens or something to cover the lens to do various things with it. And for a while I was like, are they trying to solve a problem that doesn't actually exist? But I guess, as I mean, if you had that anyway, what's the point? But what you'd probably do is do all your setup initially with this, take it away, and then you could bury this deep in a plane, I'd say a plane, probably a small plane where you wouldn't have a flight controller, have this all sort of buried in and just the lens sticking out. And then if you ever wanted to change the settings, you could do so with your gestures. So I'm going to show you exactly how that works now, um, but not here because you can't really see anything and I need to record the footage in some goggles. So join me down on the floor where we go into close-up mode. Okay, so what I've got, uh, as talked about before, is the camera and that's connected to the little OSD selector thing. Uh, and generally speaking, if you were going to install this in a model, that wouldn't be there. Uh, this comes down to this connector onto the VTX and then this special control signal one. What I've done here is I've hooked up the 5 volt supply to a servo cable which then connects up to this uh, old ESC. So that's just going to run off the back there. So let's plug it in. Okay, so just for the purposes of seeing stuff, there's Mr. Poopy Butthole there. Uh, we can film him when we need to film stuff. But um, I'm just going to put the lens cap on first off so we can go through the options through the little menu thing. So it's one of these, press the center button and you can go all through the thing. So you've got the FPV setup and this actually just gives you the time powered on, the amount of power you've got. This is just literally the position. What's position to mean?
it's just moved it up there for you. Yep, literally just moves it over the place. I think for most people, they'll probably want position ones because at the bottom. And as you see there, we've got 4.8 volts, which is coming in from the Beck because the VTX is powering the camera. And then the time there is just the amount of time you've been on. Otherwise, we've got the exposure thing. Uh, exposure value, backlight compensation, day and night mode for color, which I like. Uh, image setup, color gain, mirror, gamma, auto white balance, auto gamma control. Function setup, you can switch it between power and TSC and 16.9 and 4.3. It's all fairly normal things, and that is a factory reset. So nothing much to do there. Now on this, if I go left, I go through these various uh, states of exposure control. If I point the camera at Mr. Poopy Butthole again, so we can actually can't see much because it keeps falling down. Oh, sideways, Mr. Poopy Butthole. Sunny, cloudy, indoor, light tracks, twilight. Won't make too much sense all indoors, but it is there. If we go down, we go through the various settings of power. Now, there's only actually three sets of power. There's pit, 25 milliwatts, and 200 milliwatts. 600 milliwatts doesn't actually exist. Um, I'm thinking it's probably sending it through the camera because that's kind of what it has to do in smart audio world. So we'll put that at 25. And then finally if we press the up button we will go through the favorite FPV channels we have and 5658 is what we're on. This is race 1 essentially. I think that's race 1 to 4. Um, and we've just got the four set up there. So what you can do again through the setup is you hold down the up button and let me just put the lens cap on because it's a little bit hard to see. Oh yeah, I've just noticed there that that's not race one, is it? I've got my figures the wrong way around. So it's on the A band at the moment. So what you can do with this is basically change your favorites. So at the moment, we've got all these possible frequencies and we set them up on these favorites here. So if I was to say for frequency um, number five, I want, let's say, F1 because I'm on F1 quite a lot. Frequency number six, let's have race one, like so. And then if we exit that. Now I happen to be on race one in my goggles, and it's obviously just very close to, to do the other uh, pick up the other ones. But if I then say one, two, three, four, five, six like that, that will eventually flash and go to that. And that is how you do the actual um, setup of your favorite. So there's, you have got as well on the VTX a button to press, but that kind of is, is not how it works. So what we're gonna do now is let's talk about, hey, let's say we don't have the OSD because we've installed it in a plane and we want to know how we would change this. If this was all buried away somewhere and we didn't have access to it, what would we do? It's all about covering the camera at the right time. Unplug the power. And then what we have to do is plug the power back in and put our hand in front of the camera when we see the logo on the screen. There's the logo. There's my hand. And it's gone first to personal. And if I do that again, it goes to sunny. I do it again, cloudy. And this is about covering it, then releasing. And if you want it to be there, you just let it go. So that stops flashing and it says, okay, I've now set to that. Now, if you then want to change something else, you'd need to reset it again. So let's do that in the same way. There's the logo, there's my hand. So I'm gonna keep my hand down. And this time it's gone to 25 milliwatts, that's flashing. So if I do that again, it goes to 200. 
600, which doesn't exist, pit, and 25 milliwatts. Let's reset again. Now, I think the, the thing you might change most is your channels. So I'm just keeping my hand in front of it whilst it goes to the frequency, and it's on frequency six. Frequency one, and I'm gonna loop right round again. That's frequency six. Or I could, why don't I stop it on 5740? just to prove that it's actually changed. So that's, oops, now I've gone back to six. <laughs> so that's 5740, that's F1, so I should lose picture in my goggles now. Yep. <laughs> And there I am, back on 5740 and recording. So that is essentially how it all works, which is all quite funky. And I think it's quite sort of clever how that works and stuff. I would say though that a big failing in this one is the fact that there's, well, you could either say because there's no power connection, there's that control connection instead or you could blame it on the VTX. Because the VTX runs on five volts, then the power going into this is always gonna be five volts and that's always gonna display on the OSD. Of course, you don't, you don't want to know that your BEC is supplying five volts. You want to know the amount of power you've got in your aircraft, you're probably your plane, because on any quad, you're gonna have a beta flight OSD, generally speaking. So, although they've given all these cables and it's good to go, I think what they really need to do there is have a separate, either a separate power connector for the camera, uh, because you'd have to split that off and take that direct to the battery, or they need to have this be able to run on a higher voltage and then have an option to pass through that voltage so you're getting a real reading of what the power is. So yeah, there's still some little bits to do, even if you uh, have the right sort of circumstance where you want to use this gesture control and put it in that kind of plane, you'd still need to, we'd well, still want to see the voltage, your main voltage on your battery, not the voltage from your bag. Well, I think this is very interesting. It's a very novel idea coming up with the idea of um, doing things with a gesture control on a sort of regular camera like this. You'll notice there's no footage of me flying it and that's because the FXT uh, Venus Pro is one I've tested before and I don't think there's anything different in this V2 apart from the fact it seems to send some sort of smart audio signal back. The VTX I haven't tested before but it looks pretty good. Um, you can go between, as I said, pit 25, 200 milliwatts. It's very tiny so you can put it in places. And I kind of think that this is what this is designed for. I don't think you'd put this in a quad because generally speaking any beta flight board that comes out now has an OST in it, and then you'd want to use the smart audio in this via the flight controller rather than the camera. Um, so, I, and then I think in a big plane, you, you might have uh, sort of the INF style device or some sort of flight controller, and that wouldn't fit. So I'm kind of thinking that the microplane, this gets chucked somewhere where it's kind of buried, although it still needs some airflow. This gets chucked in the foam, and you've just got literally this lens poking out. So you set it up and you, you have like your race band with a, a eight channels or whatever, and you can easily change your VTX without trying to dig in and trying to get this little button or whatever, and then it's quite good. It seems like a very specific case, and I, I, there's, there's one shortcoming, as I mentioned, and that's the fact that as it stands, it's nice that it comes with all the cabling, but of course it's not reading the voltage from your main battery, it's reading the voltage from the five volt supply going in there. So it's always gonna be like, you know, 4.8, 4.9 volts which is a bit of a shame. I mean, obviously you can cut the cable and do stuff. Similarly, you can cut the cable and use this as a smart audio device. Um, but it kind of spoils the, the idea of what it was designed to do, which is like a, a little plug and play, go in and, and, and sort it. Maybe they'll do a V2 it and, and do something and sort it out. As it stands though, uh, at the very least, this is a nice camera. This seems to be a pretty good VTX. Put them together and you've got something a little bit novel, but if you want, of course, you can use them completely differently. 
Anyway, this is the Smart Digestion Box from FXT. Big thanks for them for sending it over for review. And of course, there's links down below for where you can find it. And I'm really interested to hear from you guys if you think you've got an application this can be used for, if, if I'm missing something, because I'm just thinking like a microplane. But what else is out there where you might find this gesture controller is very useful? Let me know if you got one. Aside from that, I hope this video has been useful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.